fall harvest vegetables. Now, you'll notice that I have a lot of color here in this basket. And one of the easiest ways to tell if you're eating healthy is to look at your plate and see the color. Because if it's just brown and white, like we like to eat here in Pennsylvania, if you're just eating brown and white, chances are you're not getting any vitamins or minerals and also very few fibers. Fiber in your food is really important. <laughs> so we're going to make a couple of dishes today. We're going to make a butternut squash. How's this for <laughs> How's this for a butternut squash? Now people say healthy food's expensive, but look at all this. Only three dollars. So healthy food isn't expensive. This is really healthy. We're going to make a rice stuffed butternut squash. This is going to be gluten free. And so I do work with uh, the Brain Balance, which is in Dover area on the Carlisle Road, to help them to find good food choices for their uh, sensitivities for the children. So we're going to make a gluten-free rice stuffing. We're going to stuff the butternut squash, but we could also stuff a turkey with it if you had to eat gluten-free. And we're also going to make a Pennsylvania Harvest stir-fry using all these vegetables. So let's get started. So we're going to use sausage. You can use any kind of sausage you want. I got chicken sausage. This is the sausage I use. This is Ristelli Direct. Most of the whole foods that I use are available. I don't sell them, but I link to them out of my website called Deb's Favorite Whole Foods. <coughs> because uh, it's an easy way for me to say, oh, you like this? Go to Deb's Favorite Whole Foods .com. But I'm not selling it. It's just that's what I buy. This is Ristelli Direct. They're very strict meat processing, uh, you know, like the government requires a meat packing plant to test for salmonella twice a year, whereas Rustelli Direct does it four times a day. And so they have, and they visit all the farms where they get their meat from. It's not our, all organic, it's not all <coughs> farm raised, but it's all humanely treated and lots of it is farm raised. They do have some organics and things like that. So I don't sell this, but this is the meat I use. It's called Rustelli's. And I have some chicken sausage here. So Rather than buying chicken sausage, I was, it's, it's, we don't know what's in it. I'm just going to take this out of the casing and use it as sausage for our recipe. So once you find a quality uh, ingredient, it doesn't mean it has to, you can be creative. Uh, you don't necessarily have to use it exactly the way it was given to you. So they don't sell a ground sausage, but inside of all sausage casings is ground sausage. And they have a lot of flavors. In this case, I just it's the wine and herb. Walnuts, what else? 
<laughs> but you can use cranberries or you can use raisins. You know, because I was just trying to save a little bit of investment. Put a little raisins in here. What else do we need? Cranberries would be nice though, wouldn't it? Yes. yes. What else do we need? That's it. Salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. Yeah, I think we will put some pepper in. Ooh, now we got a problem. Now we got to start cutting this baby, don't we? <laughs> yeah. Now we got to start cutting. Let's mix this up. This is just about perfect for stuffing a nice turkey. And I think the whole family would really enjoy it. So, you know, just because your kids have to be dairy-free, gluten-free, egg-free, doesn't mean that the whole family has to suffer because you can still make good food. You just got to pick some choices that everybody can eat. Now, neck pumpkin, butternut squash, all the orange pumpkins are pretty much the same. The recipe calls for pumpkin, you can use butternut squash, it calls for butternut squash, you can use neck, neck pumpkin, you can use any kind of orange pumpkin you want. So this keeps really nicely in the refrigerator. One of the things that most people don't do, no, don't buy them is because they don't even know where to start to cut them. The easiest thing to do is to cut them into like-sized pieces. So we'll save this for another day. We could cut it in half, seed it, and bake it stuffed with our rice alone in a covered casserole with a little bit of water. But we want to eat quickly. We're going to eat really soon. So we're going to, not going to use this piece. But you can use that for something else. But what we want to do is cut this into basically shapes that are basically the same thickness all the way along. And now this part, the neck part, doesn't have any seeds, so it's a lot easier to trim. Uh, and you could use a vegetable peeler for this if you want, but I really recommend a knife. The skin is pretty tough. If you're using a vegetable peeler, chances are you're going to leave some of the tough skin part off. I mean, after all, you got a lot of squash here, so you're not worried about wasting it too much. And then what we're going to do is cut it into discs. Oh. <laughs> I wanted that to happen. <laughs> and then what we're going to do is make a little pocket here. Now this is a what they call a Parisian scoop. It's a melon baller. A melon baller is in the fancy <coughs> culinary department. It's called a Parisian scoop. And so we're just going to make a nice little pocket. You could save this for putting in your soup if you wanted. We don't want to go all the way through to the bottom. To the other side is what I mean. So we're just going to like make a little shallow. This is a really nice tool. We're going to actually uh, use it again later for one of our other recipes. So let's make enough of these for everybody to have one of their own. How about it, ladies? All right. Cut. So after you get done opening up, taking, making this little pocket here, we have our mixture. has all the ingredients in it. And just take one of these nice scoops, press it in there, and make a stuffed squash. Now when I put this in the oven, I'm going to add just a little bit of water to the pan, which will help the squash itself. some stir fry. Stir fry means stir and fry. Okay, 
It's really quick. Now the thing about stir fry is you have to have a stir fry skillet, whether it's a wok or actually you could probably do it in any skillet, but these are designed for stir fry and I'm going to show you why as we go along. But the, the secret to having good stir fry, it's really nutritious. And you have to have all your ingredients ready to go before you start stirring and frying because it's really quick and you stir and fry. So first we need to get our mise en place ready. Does everybody know what mise en place is? Mise en place means get your stuff in place. That's French. Or get your stuff in place. So let's do that first. Our stuff includes an onion. We're going to use a wide variety of vegetables. So we have color. Every time you look at your plate, you should have color. If you're putting your kid's dinner down and it's just brown and white, you should say to yourself, what can I add to that plate to add more color and add more fiber? And that's a really easy way to teach children how to make better food choices. If you look at your plate and it's only brown and white, well then you need to add some color. So the goal in stir fry is that you will cook it in the order that it takes to get done. In other words, what cooks quicker will go in last, and what takes longer to cook will go in first. So yellow squash certainly cooks quicker than onions. So we're gonna line our ingredients up, we're gonna line our mise en place up, in such a way that it's going to be really easy to stir and fry. Actually, I did this exact demonstration at the JCC the other day. That was fun, live. So if you belong to any groups or clubs that you'd like to invite me to, I'd be glad to come and do a demonstration for you, your other clubs as well. Zucchini. cooks just about the same speed as yellow squash, so we'll put that in on that side. Now carrots, on the other hand, take a little bit longer to cook. Now a lot of people ask me, how do you cut so fast? And actually, very carefully. The secret to cutting so fast is to have the right knife, for starters. Because these kind of knives, this is called a chef's knife, or a French knife, and they're designed to be cut, used in the way that I use them. And so the first step is to have the right kind of knife. This shape is called a chef's knife. And the second step is to hold it properly. You may notice that I put my fingers on the blade and my hand on the handle. This is the proper way to hold a chef's knife. Fingers on the blade, hand on the handle. And then when you're doing coarse cutting, like I was doing those carrots, you use your heel and you rock action. And then when you're doing fine cutting, like you want to be a little bit more precision oriented, you use your point. Like this. Now the other secret, first you have to have the right knife. Next you have to have the right grip. And third, you need to keep your fingers tucked back like this. You'll notice that good chefs keep their fingers tucked back. You don't hold your food like this. You keep your fingers tucked back so that they're not in the line of fire. And really, when you're cutting, when chefs are cutting really, really fast, the peppers are not something you normally cook, cut fast because the skin is kind of rubbery. They cut better if you put skin side down. But when chefs cut really, really fast, they're actually using the, the, like this is a guide on the back of the knife. So that it's kind of a guide on where to cut. And we're gonna have some tomatoes, which are also quick cooking. And then we need some fresh herbs. Let's see, what do we have here? Let's use rosemary this time. Right out of my garden. Rosemary. You 
just reverse strip it off the off the herb. Now you can use dry herbs if you don't have any fresh. All you have to do, if your recipe calls for fresh and you want to use dry, you use half as much. If your recipe calls for dry and you want to use fresh, you use twice as much.
want to make this Italian flavor, let's put a little bit of Italian seasoning mix in here. This is actually oregano. If you want to make it Asian flavor, all you have to do is sprinkle it with a little bit of, uh, maybe add some ginger. Sprinkle it with a little bit of soy sauce, maybe a pinch of brown sugar. Same recipe. You're done. That's all you need. <coughs> so the, the hot spot is in the center. Now you stir. Oh, I'm tired of stirring. Stir. Oops. It's got some nice color there, doesn't it? Serve this over brown rice. Actually, that would be nice over the recipe we just made. We made that uh, gluten-free rice. This is still gluten-free. We didn't use any butter. Uh, so if you're cooking for gluten-free, uh, dairy-free, and egg-free, this recipe right here, along with the stuffing, would be a nice complement to any meal. Uh, for people that have special needs, oftentimes people call me with questions on how can they cook. they got a relative coming in from out of town. It's not that hard. It's just understanding that the gluten part is in your brown flour grains, most of them. Uh, brown rice doesn't have any gluten in it. We use brown rice. Stir and fry. I would say that is just about done. Put a little bit of pepper in there. finished brown rice stuffed squash and it's a nutrient powerhouse and gluten free and this recipe along with our stir fry recipe could go together to make a nice side dish for any holiday dinner if you have entertaining to do that needs to be gluten free egg free or dairy free so when you have kids that have food sensitivities, you can still make healthy food that the whole family will enjoy. We want to thank everybody for coming. My name is Jeff Bixler, and you're watching.